Hey guys, it's Mindy. So in today's video, I want to discuss with you how to set up a successful saltwater reef aquarium. And I chose my 125 gallon that you see here. I want to go with you, go over with you exactly what I use in my fish tank um, that has made it so successful for me from lighting to everything that I use underneath the tank. I'm going to go from top to bottom with you and tell you exactly what I've used um, in my fish tank. I've had my tank set up for about 14 months now and it's been doing extremely well and my fish are extremely healthy and my corals are doing really well. It hasn't been perfect, I've, you know, I've learned here and there, uh, but for the most part everything has been very healthy and has been doing really well. And for the second part of the video, uh, besides all the equipment and going over that with you, I want to also talk with you about how to go over your water parameters and exactly what I do um, on a daily, um, every other day basis to keep my waters at their very best and doing dosing, which is what I do to keep my, my waters where they should be and testing them as I should. So I want to go over that with you and talk to you about how how to go about doing that and, and where I keep my waters at and, and uh, so you can understand a little bit more about maybe what you should be doing when it comes to keeping your waters where they should be all, at also too so that your, your fish can be healthy and your corals can be healthy also and everyone is very happy in your fish tank. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to go and show you a little bit of my fish tank. You can see what's what's in here of all my corals and all my my fish and uh, and then I'm going to start going over all the equipment and you can see exactly what I use in my fish tank so again uh, thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed make sure that you subscribe and let's get right on with the video thanks again okay so inside the tank I have two just regular Aquion power heads they're just the simple ones, nothing special. gives my torches current. It's my golden torch. All right, so let's start with the lighting. Um, so all of my lighting is attached to the canopy underneath here. So uh, I have more of a basic style lighting here. I will, I will start off right now by saying that I'm not the craziest with the lighting that I have on this tank. With the corals that I have in this tank, I know I need better lighting and I'm in the process of getting better lighting. The lighting that I have on the tank right now is good enough for what I have. Um, my corals have been happy and have been doing well, but I know that the lighting can be better. So uh, the lighting that I have right now, I have four 72 inch 
uh, BHO fluorescent T12s. They're attached. Uh, I have four of them. They're a mix of whites and blues that are all attached. Uh, they go all the way through. And then I have two strips. They're 36 inch strips that are attached underneath. You can't see them, but they're, they're underneath here. Um, they're by Orbit and uh, they are 30, like I said, they're 36 inch longs. They're LED Orbits. So those are by Current and I have the LEDs mixed in with the VHOs. So that's what I currently have for the lighting right now. And like I said, it does its job. It's, it makes everyone happy. Um, but I know the lighting could be better and I'm in the process of getting better lighting for this tank. Um, this tank I want to upgrade. I would like to eventually upgrade to a 220 for this tank. This is a 125 right now and I would like to at least get a, one, a 220. Um, but I'm slowly putting money in my piggy bank right now. I have so many tanks that I I can only do so much, so um, putting money in the piggy bank and uh, one of the things is to get better lighting too. So, uh, you know, I have AIs on my other tanks and, you know, Radeon is also another option of putting on this tank too. So um, that could be an option here and, you know, give me your opinion of what you think, you know, I should put on this tank, um, whether it be AIs, Radeon, or if you have another idea, let me know what you think for, for lighting, but, but I do know that um, what I have on here now, like I said, it does its job, but I've always, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, I want to get better lighting, but for right now, it's, it's okay. And I do have two fans on the back. I have a, um, a fan right here and a fan right here, and that keeps everything cool. It gets kind of hot in there, so that those two fans kind of keep the temperature down from the heat that's given off by the lights. And then again, there's also another fan down here that kind of blows on the wet and dry system that kind of keeps, cools off the water from the wet and dry too that kind of keeps the temperature down there too. So that's for lighting. All right, now I'm taking you down below the tank where all the magic happens. Actually, where all the ugliness happens. You will see I have a standard wet and dry system right here with the bio balls, the standard pull-out tray with a filter pad that I change regularly. Um, I have a couple, I have a poly filter pad, a uh, carbon filter bag in there. I change those regularly. Behind all of that mess, I have a mag drive pump 9.5, which is back in there. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's behind the protein skimmer. Now the skimmer that you see here, it's a Red Sea Berlin protein skimmer. Now you see this box here. Um, the box is actually, all it does is it really just has a pad that the water goes into. It just prevents bubbles when the water hits. So that's all that box is for. And this tank actually has the undermounted drilling on the two ends of the tank. So it has um, the two coming in to the wet and dry there. Let's see. So I actually have an extra fan that sits, I don't know if you can see, but I do have an extra fan that sits right there that just keeps the water cool, an extra fan. I do have two fans that also sit on the canopy. Now over on this side, I have a UV sterilizer. You see my sterilizer here. Big tall guy. So I have my UV sterilizer. This is a Pentar 25 watt UV sterilizer. And then I have my, right here, I have my digital aquatics 
breathe keeper life. Now this really helps keep, it keeps temperature, like it's a controller for the temperature, for the lighting. This is actually really nice to have. So, um, I have that. I also have the ballast for the lighting system is all attached on the right side for all my lighting. It's all there. Um, also the lighting for the orbits are on the back wall there. Um, I also have a heater that I didn't mention. There's a heater in the wet and dry. My heater is an Evo Jagger heater. So I have that, that's in the wet and dry. Um, guys so the next topic that I want to talk to you about is testing your water um, it's always super important to make sure that your water is point on at all times so testing your waters is super important make sure your parameters are always right on at all times I test my water probably about three times a week and um, I usually do like Monday Wednesday Friday or Tuesday Thursday Saturday dosing on my tanks uh, and I do testing on those days also to see where they're at when I do my dosing. So when I do my testing, um, I use these kits here. Right here is calcium. I'll test for calcium. I test for alkalinity. And, um, and the only other, other thing that I do for dosing is iodine. So uh, when I do my calcium, I'll, I'll check my calcium. I have quite a few tanks. So when I do my dosing and my, my uh, testing with my kits, I go through these quite fast. And, uh, and it takes me a good hour probably to test all my tanks and, and do this. So I'll test my, my calcium and make sure that it's right around 450. That's usually where I try to get my marker for my calcium on my tanks. Now, making sure that it's right up there, you know, it, you know, Make sure your numbers aren't where they're at and just wreak havoc on your tank. So, you know, calcium is super important for your cal for your corals. So you want to make sure that they're happy and that they're flourishing and they're growing. And uh, you can I can always tell when the calcium is not where it's at because you know when the lights come on in the morning and my corals are just not looking like they should be. I can just tell right that I can tell immediately that something's off when it comes to the chemicals. So usually my, my corals are not looking right. I immediately will test the tank with the chemicals because I know something is not right. So um, calcium, I usually make sure it's around 450 for calcium. And then um, this is the test for alkalinity. I test my alkalinity, like I said, about three times a week. And the dosing is about three times a week for my tanks. When I do my testing for my alkalinity, I'll try to get the range somewhere between like about 3.2 to 3.6 uh, for the alkalinity and um, try to make sure it's, it's right in that range. Um, so that's about it for the alkalinity. And um, you know, like I said, again, the alkalinity is super important. And uh, just like the cal just like the calcium, uh, the two go hand in hand. So if one's off, the, usually the other one's off too. And uh, and it's also super important for the fish and the and the corals. So you want to make sure that both of these are spot on. Um, especially if your fish or your corals aren't doing well, you want to make sure that your your uh, your chemicals are are perfect so that they can get right back to a good health. So. Um, this is the test that I use for alkalinity, and like I said, I usually make sure that my numbers are between 3.2 and 3.6. And the only other thing that I do, uh, I do dose with is iodine. I put this in my tanks. It's very good for your corals. So I do put some iodine in my tanks about three days a week uh, for my corals. I put some iodine in my tanks also. So. That is it for my dosing, and like I said, uh, make sure that your waters are are perfect, and you can really tell when it comes to, uh, you know, them being off. Like I said, when I see my corals just not looking like themselves and not coming out, or or you know they're they're tucked in, or they just don't seem to be growing, 
usually I can tell that immediately that something's off with the water, with the with the chemicals. So I'll test them immediately and make sure that that they're that they're spot on. So it's super important to make sure that your chemicals are 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 on. And if you don't ha if you haven't been testing your your alkalinity and your calcium, you need to go out and get a test as soon as possible and start testing those. Um, all right, thank you. So that's it. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the video. I hope it was inform informative and you took a lot from it. I hope I could help you out and that you really enjoyed the video. And, and if you uh, enjoyed and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, please leave comments. Please le uh, hit the bell notification. And if you feel that others will enjoy the video, please share the video. Um, leave comments below if I miss something in the video. Uh, feel free to leave a comment and I would be more than happy to answer the questions that you have. Stay tuned for more videos that I have to come. I have plenty more tanks to share with you and what I've done with them uh, with my aggressive tank, my other reef tanks, and my seahorse tank. Uh, I have so much more to share with you so please stay tuned and uh, like I said hit that bell notification so when those are posted you'll be there ready to watch more. So thank you again, and uh, I will see you guys again soon. Thanks.